Hi, I'm Christy Kavlik, a project officer in the Office of Special Education Programs. Today, a colleague, Cecilia Rosenquist, and I would like to give you a brief overview of the Office of Special Education Programs. Next slide. The PowerPoint today will cover the Office of Special Education and Rehabilitative Services. And within OSERS, we have the Rehabilitative Services Administration and the Office of Special Education Programs. And we'll talk a little more specifically about the different divisions within OSEP. Next slide, please. So OSER's mission and vision, our mission is to improve early childhood educational and employment outcomes and raise expectations for all people with disabilities, their families, their communities, and the nation. Our vision is that all Americans with disabilities will live and thrive with their disabilities in their own communities. Next slide. OSER's is organized um, with the Office of the Assistant Secretary. The Assistant Secretary is a politically appointed position and within the, um, as noted before, the Assistant Secretary oversees the Office of Special Education Programs and the Rehabilitation Services Administration. Next slide. The Office of the Assistant Secretary um, oversees three offices within the Office of the Assistant Secretary. There is the Office of the Deputy Assistant Secretary, the Executive Office, the Office of P Policy and Planning, and then our Communications and Customer Service Team. Our Office of Policy and Planning oversees grants for special institutions, and those grants uh, cover the Gallaudet University, the American Printing House for the Blind, the Helen Keller National Center, and the National Technical Assistance Center for the Deaf. Next slide, please. We wanna give you just a brief few slides on RSA. Their mission is to provide leadership and resources to assist state and other agencies in providing vocational rehabilitation and other services to individuals with disabilities to maximize their employment, independence, and integration into the community and the competitive labor market. Next slide. The Rehabilitation Services Administration is divided into the State Monitoring and Program Improvement Division and the Training and Services Division. Those offices oversee a number of grant programs that focus on data collection, fiscal technical assistance, and the VR program unit, as well as supporting training programs and service programs. Next slide, please. The Office of Special Education Programs, which is where Celia and I are housed. Our mission is to lead the nation's efforts to improve outcomes for children with disabilities birth through 21 and their families, ensuring access to fair, equitable, and high quality education and services. We envision a world in which individuals with disabilities have unlimited opportunities to learn and to lead purposeful and fulfilling lives. Next slide, please. The Office of Special Education Programs, we have an office of the director who oversees two divisions, the research to practice division and the monitoring and state improvement planning division. We will go into a little more detail about each of these divisions. I'm gonna start with research to practice. Next slide, please. The Individuals with Disabilities Education Act or IDEA is the statute that OSEP administers. The Research to Practice Division of OSEP administers Part D of the IDEA. The Part D program is the Discretionary Grants Program. And the Discretionary Grant Program are competitive grants designed to help infants, toddlers, children, and youth with disabilities 
achieve improved educational results and functional outcomes. Our goal is to positively influence the field of early intervention in special education policy and practice and respond to the needs of state educational agencies, lead agencies for Part C, along with local districts, schools, and programs as they work to improve and deliver practices based on evidence for children and families. Next slide, please. The core functions of the Research to Practice Division are to serve as national leaders in early intervention and special education programs, policies, and activities, collaborate with federal partners and key stakeholders in education and related fields, and develop and administer grants and contracts, as well as provide information and data to the public, including policy leaders and other stakeholders. Next slide, please. Within the Research to pr Practice Discretionary Grants Program, we fund grants across different line items of the budget. We fund grants related to personnel development, technical assistance and dissemination, state personnel development, parent training information, educational technology media materials, and we also fund technical assistance on state data collections. Additionally, RTP is responsible for providing an annual report to Congress on the implementation of IDEA. Celia will go into detail on this discretionary grant programs that RTP oversees. Next slide, please. Great, thank you, Christy. So the first program in the personnel development program helps to meet state identified needs for adequate numbers of fully credentialed personnel to serve children with disabilities by supporting competitive awards to provide research-based training and professional development to prepare special education related services, early intervention, and regular education personnel to work with children with disabilities. It's also to ensure that those personnel are fully qualified and possess the skills and knowledge that are needed to serve children with disabilities. The department is required to make competitive grants that support training activities in a few high priority areas, including general personnel development and preparing beginning special educators, personnel serving children with low incidence disabilities, and leadership personnel. Next slide. Technical Assistance and Dissemination Program Area. This program makes competitive awards to fund TA centers and model demonstration projects. These TA, TA and D projects typically focus on a topic, population, or age range. And topics include um, areas such as dispute resolution, positive behavioral interventions and supports, intensive intervention, children with deaf blindness, early childhood, and secondary transition, to name a few. To support the implementation of IDEA and, to use, and the use of evidence-based practices, the TA and D projects work together as a network to generate and bring information, knowledge, and support to those who need it including state and local administrators, practitioners, parents and families, and policymakers. Next slide. The State Personnel Development Program is described in sections 651 through 655 of IDEA as amended by ESSA. Each State Personnel Development Grant determines how they can use their funds to improve results for children with disabilities. However, at least 90% of the funds must be used for evidence-based professional development that supports the implementation of effective practices. The SIG net Network was formed to support these particular grants in their work. And this network and the OSEP project officers work together to provide universal targeted and intensive technical assistance to grantees, to disseminate useful information to SPDG grantees to help them improve results for infants, toddlers, children, and youth with disabilities and their families, 
and to ensure implementation activities are supported by scientifically based research. Next slide. The Parent Training and Information Program provides families and youth with training and information designed to assist the children in meeting developmental, functional, and challenging academic achievement goals and to help assist in preparing to lead productive, independent adult lives. The program also supports families and youth with training and information on their rights, responsibilities, and protections under IDEA in order to develop the skills necessary to cooperatively and effectively participate in planning and decision making. The program area also engages under underserved families, which include Native American and military connected families. The program provides universal technical assistance to families, youth educators, and service providers. It provides technical assistance to other parent centers um, so that they can make more efficient use of their resources and properly manage their nonprofits and federal grants. The program also works co collaboratively with state and local education agencies, lead agencies, local early intervention providers, and other agencies that reach um, families to improve child outcomes. Next slide. The Educational Technology and Media and Materials Program promotes the development, demonstration, and use of technology. It supports educational activities designed to be of educational value in the classroom for students with disabilities. It provides support for captioning and video description that is appropriate for use in the classroom. And the program also supports investments in providing accessible educational materials to students with disabilities in a timely manner. Next slide. The technical assistance on state data collection program area is to improve the capacity of states to meet the data collection and reporting requirements in section 616 and, and 618 of IDEA, and it's funded with Part B formula funds. There is an um, early childhood data system, DAISY Center. There is an IDEA data center. There's also another data center on the integration of IDEA data. And there's also an IDEA fiscal reporting um, center. The National Center for Educational Outcomes is also another investment under this particular area and um, this program area. And it assists states in analyzing and using formative and summative assessment data to support the implementation of the state's identifiable, measurable, measurable results for children as described in their IDEA Part B state systemic improvement plan. Next slide. This slide provides an overview of current OSEP centers. There's over 34 funded OSEP centers and um, there are links to each of the centers provided in, um, in this particular uh, slide. And more information about each of the different centers um, can be found um, when you go to those specific center links. Next slide. Another great resource for finding out about different OSEP investments and the work being done is the OSEP Ideals That Work website. And please explore the different areas. There's federal resources for stakeholders. There's resources for grantees, as well as um, you can find different, different investments under the Find the Cent a Center or a particular grant and more information about them. Next slide. As Christy had mentioned, in addition to OSEP, there's also the Monitoring and State Improvement Planning Division, or MSEP, and we just wanted to um, share some information about that particular division. 
So the vision for MSEP is um, driving excellent outcomes for infants, toddlers, children, and youth with disabilities through monitoring and supporting states. And through monitoring and technical assistance to states, MSIP ensures that the rights afforded under IDEA to eligible infants, toddlers, children, and youth with disabilities and their families are implemented through statewide systems that incorporate effective strategies to improve educational outcomes, to prepare and provide children with options for further education, employment, or independent living. Next slide. So MSIP um, works with all 50 states as well as commonwealths and territories and freely, freely associated states. Um, and um, MSIP and the Research to Practice Division um, are very collaborative in the work and informing um, the needs of our, um, helping the work inform the needs of our stakeholders and addressing those needs. Next slide. This slide is for the IDEA. Um, it, this site has the, the laws and policies. It also, um, it provides a link to the law and the policy as well as policy letters. So it's a great resource to have and to refer to. Next slide. For other resources and to keep up to date um, on different work that OSEP is um, engaged in, this slide provides a link to signing up for the OSEP update. And it is a newsletter that provides information about um, current activities, um, priorities underway at OSEP, as well as providing uh, links to our centers and different investments and some highlights from those um, on a monthly basis. So it's a great resource to sign up for. Next slide. There's also an early learning newsletter. And um, once again, it's a great resource talking about um, that provides information about current investments, um, priorities, activities underway related to early learning um, at OSEP as well as um, its partner agencies. And a link is provided here to sign up for their newsletter as well. Next slide. The OSEP Scholars Group. This is not a actually an OSEP uh, organization. It is a OSEP scholar organization that was created by a group, a group of scholars external um, to OSEP that was interested in um, setting up a networking group. And so the mission of this group is to provide networking opportunities, expand access to resources, and enhance professional con um, connections for all OSEP scholars. And um, it's for doctoral students and also for alumni and faculty can also join this group. So we highly encourage people to, um, to go ahead and sign up. They have, I believe they have guest speakers on a periodic basis. And once again, this is completely run by OSEP, OSEP scholars and the, um, the activities that they undertake are organized by that group. Thank you very much, and um, please feel free to reach out if you have any additional questions.